Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and for this week in review we first looked at my 75 gallon South American community of nanofish and talked a bit about why it works and sort of stocking with layering based by loose geographical region as well as choosing fish that sort of support the other fish in order to give them the most outgoing behavior within our community aquariums. Uh, this aquarium, I think, is one of my favorites in my fish room, and it's about 15 months old at this point and stocked with barred pencilfish, green neons, otocinclus, salt and pepper quarries, orange laser quarries, a giant odo, and some epistogrammas. Up next, we went out into the yard and looked at my bog and succulent gardens. There are tons and tons and tons of flowers on the various pitcher plants that are just starting to come back to life. And I showed you sort of what to look for as you're looking around a bog garden like this to see if it's still alive. Now, of course, the flowers are always a good sign. We also took a look at my Venus flytraps and my pitcher or and my sundews, which I was pretty sure were totally dead, but have ended up being very, very much alive. Just goes to show you sort of the amazing transformation a lot of these plants can take when housed in conditions that mimic their natural environment. I find it super fascinating to see how much they change from one season to another and have been pleasantly surprised by how all of these plants have done out in my gardens. I was very unsure how this garden in particular would do as it's very shallow and it's concrete and often bogs are exceptionally deep. But as we can see by looking around, it has been an overwhelming success as far as I'm concerned. Even this little sundew that I thought was a goner because it flowered and went to seed last year is coming back around the edges. I have a lot of really, really interesting growth in my succulent garden, and I look forward to watching this one mature over the upcoming years. All of these gardens are marathons, not sprints. Now we took a quick look as well at my bargain tubs. This particular one, which is the 40 gallon tough stuff tub with my DIY waterfall that I showed you guys last week is probably my favorite. Now that may change as the other bins come to maturity. We took a look at my baby uh, Polypterus delhezi and I introduced you to Gimpy who is missing one of his fins but obviously is eating well and is absolutely adorable. And we saw some of the other ones as well. And as you can see, they're extremely active, happy, and putting on good weight and size. Up next, we went out to the greenhouse and I mixed up my DIY mix for vegetables, which is peat, perlite, and potting soil to make a nice, light, fluffy soil, uh, hopefully so that my veggies will grow in the greenhouse well and remain well hydrated without being too wet or too dry or requiring too much labor. So far, everything in there is going really, really well. Again, more information on all of these projects in the links that I provide at each segment. I'm pretty excited to see where this goes this year. We also potted up some plumeria that were given to me by one of my super fans from Patreon, Stephanie. I'm excited to see if that takes. And we moved out the first fish to the greenhouse. This week we moved out Brachydanio kyathit, least killifish, and gold ring danios. And in fact, today even I may move out more fish. So make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on so you don't miss any of the updates to any of the various projects going on around the fish room. I also wanted to give a big thank you to all the people that have chosen to support me on Patreon. One of the videos that will be coming out next week will be about the shade cloth options for my greenhouse and what I ended up buying. Now, I didn't end up buying, spoiler alert, uh, an entire coverage for the greenhouse because I really want to be able to show you guys how much of a difference it really makes, if it makes one at all, and how easy it is to assemble, install, and deal with the particular shade cloth that is designed for this greenhouse. So far, all the critters in the greenhouse are doing really, really well, and I really couldn't be happier. I still do need to get more plants. More on that later. For our final video this week, we fed the big boys and just sort of enjoyed watching them do what they do, and I just find them to be, despite their large size and as seen their aggressive eating behavior, I find these guys to be absolutely fascinating and really soothing just to watch how they interact with each other, their environment, and as well as eat. And they really are 
some of my favorite fish on all the planet. As always, thanks for your continued support. Uh, stay tuned for more videos this upcoming week. And I also wanted to mention as well that I will be in North Jersey to speak at their aquarium club in the middle of May. More information about that can be found on my website, MsJinx.com, and I'll also put a link down in the description.